Let me start by saying I know nothing about horses. Nothing. I mean, nothing at all. But today, Christina and Jason are going to teach me about dealing with this horse arena, right? We're going to try to get it all smoothed out and ready to go. We're actually going to try two different attachments. We're going to try them indoors and outdoors. Multiple arenas, we're going to work with these attachments. They're going to tell us which one they like best and why. Let's get started. If you enjoy our content, we would appreciate you pressing that like button. Thank you. Now, you guys have an indoor and an outdoor arena, right? Yes. Yep. Of course, in our last episode, we actually showed some work we're doing we're doing on your new property, but this is the place you rent right now, Correct. right? Correct. Yep. Okay. Now, it seems muddy here. What's 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 going on? We try to water the arena every 3 days um, or it gets way too dusty in here, so we have to keep it wet for the drags. And, and I see the sprinklers up here, yeah. so. But you said it's not really that wet. It's not wet enough. It needs to be more, but here we are. <laughs> oh, so you like to have it, what I would say, almost muddy to do the to do the dragging. The the moisture once we till it up, the moisture will fall, and it, it'll it'll stay wet longer as deeper the the moisture is. What what we're going to try to do here, Jason, you're gonna you're gonna get on one of these machines and do half of it if you can, and then you're going to get on the other machine and do the other half. Yeah. <laughs> And Christina and I are going to judge your, your performance. I mean, judge the performance of the, of the <laughs> attachment. Christina judges me a lot. <laughs> I'm married, I understand. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, let's get going. Which one do you want to start with? Well, you, this is the one you're familiar with, right? I'll start with this one. Yeah, this yeah. one. Yeah, I know. Now, this is here. not Jason's tractor. Jason's tractor is on another one that will show outside, but this, this is Jason's rig. Christina, how long has it been since this has been... Dragged. Oh, it's been a long time, uh, probably like at least a month or two. And you um, use it yeah. multiple hours every day. Yeah. What type of surface do the horses really want? What What do they want? Uh, for our discipline for Hunter Jumper, we don't want too soft or too deep. Um, you want a sand that kind of compacts a little bit to give a little bit of cushion. Um, but you obviously don't want something too hard because us jumping and they're landing on their hooves a lot, um, you want to have a little bit of uh, cushion for them to land on. Okay, so the, the top part of it needs to be cushioned a little bit, yeah. but then it needs to be firm um, within maybe a couple of inches. Yeah. Now, is this different for different style horses yeah. or different styles? So, um, a lot of Western disciplines, they like it actually deeper. Um, when we go outside, we can talk about that too, because we had a, this used to be a Western facility, so we had to do a lot of changes in our footing to get it where we wanted it to be. Okay. What do you think about the surface that this tool is leaving? I think this is really nice. Um, okay. It's nice and fluffy on top, but and I can feel like a little bit of hardness when, like you know, them okay. to land on. Now I see some like clods or or a little bit of maybe a little bit of clay. I can't tell. Maybe it's just wet sand. Is that? Yeah. Is that okay? Uh, when he he'll go over it a couple of times and it'll break that up. It's just because it hasn't been drug in a long time and. As we add more moisture, more moisture, it just gets harder and compact without dragging. Okay. So you can't just add moisture, you have to do both. <laughs> okay. But sometimes when I'm in a pickle and he's not here, then I have to just try not to make it dusty. Well, I think you need to learn to drag it yourself. <laughs> I can, but normally the tractor's over there helping. You know, <laughs> one thing that I think I would do different, uh, now that I've watched him a little bit, I think we'd take the bucket off. I think okay. that bucket looks like it might hit something. It sticks way out there in front. It's also the one yeah. making the noise. My favorite thing is freshly drug arenas, though. <laughs> well, it makes sense, right? Uh, that, that's the one time that it's kind of perfect. So there's no reason why you couldn't do it every day or three, you know? Yeah. And we try to. Over the summer, the indoor gets a little less love because we're mainly we're outside. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So this is definitely like getting it re-ready for winter, which is great because we definitely needed this. He will run me over. This is the MK Martin TC5. Now, we've been playing with the adjustments here a good bit. And one thing that I've done, I've actually seen some videos of one of the competitors, which we don't have here today, unfortunately. And they brag on a floating back blade, OK? They say it's patented. Well, the MK Martin does not have a floating back blade. But we just took the bolts out of it to allow it to float. And that seems to work very well. I think one more pass over this and see how it's already like 
smooth those yeah, lumps out Yeah, just the too. second pass did a yeah. lot. Christy, I don't want horses, but I want an arena like this so I can just drag it every day. <laughs> <laughs> it is nice. It's like playing in a giant sandbox, like a Zen garden. That second trip's making a world of difference. Yeah. Like I said, it's been a while since it got work, so it's good. They, they really do notice the difference, the horses. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I used to have a horse that if you rode him in too hard of footing, he would like buck you off. <laughs> but if you rode him in perfect footing, he was great. No kidding. Yeah. Yeah, and a lot of like, people don't realize it because it's a huge animal, but a lot of their lamenesses and a lot of their stuff will start with like bad, the bad feet or bad footing and hard ground. Um, so they always say like if you don't have a foot, like a hoof, you don't have a horse because it really is that important. Everyone's trying to find the perfect footing always yeah. <laughs> because it's just that important. Yeah, it's that important. Did those changes help from your perspective, Jason? Or? Um, yes and no at the same time. Yes, it helped because it smoothed it out, but no and the fact that it was dragging dirt the whole time and I couldn't get the waves, like I couldn't lift the dirt up to get the hump out. And this is where they jump. So they jump and land, you know, that's right here where the high spot, where, where the tractor's at, is where the jumps usually are at. So they land here, and that's where like the circles from the, the sprinklers go. So in a sense, if we had the blade fixed, I think I think it would then have. Then you could adjust it. I could three point is. right. I could have dropped, raised it when I was pulling dirt from like the high spots and lowered it, but with it floating, it just pulled it with me. Well, I think that's a key point. Uh, the competition that has the floating blade, um, it's clear that it works. But you're saying if the blade were fixed, we think maybe you could actually control yourself because sometimes right. you want to change the right the uh, grade of the surface a little bit because of the yeah. way because you always jump in the same spot. So that's right. why this is high because they're not that's that's where the jump actually is. is. And then so they they're land down so they're there. landing uh, uh, on different spots of the hump here, so you can see that there's a downgrade and from the sprinklers. So they're always they're always compacting one area. So if I was able to lift it, I could have filled it back in and leveled it off. Do you want to uh, fix it? Because originally we had it fixed position so high that it wasn't dragging ever. Right. So we could try a fixed position that's lower and let you try it a little bit more and see if you can control that from the three point. We can try it, yes sir. I think with their float, since it's- It's, it's spring loaded? Yeah, it's spring loaded and it's teeth that I'll, I'll never be pulling dirt. Right, so that's a potentially a negative, right? I guess I, I don't know. I'll that's have to see. So Jason, uh, you wanted to try it again with the fixed blade, only we lowered the blade one notch from where it had prior been set. So you, you were able to drag. Um, just what did you experience? Um, with it being soft, it, I was able to pull the dirt into the low spots with it being fixed. And in just a couple passes, I leveled it out much okay. better than what it was when it was floating. So as far as moving dirt, if you want to actually move dirt with this thing, if you can fix that drag, right. then, then that's moving, going to be the, the best dirt. way. But what, like we had talked about before, once I uh, leveled it out and then I lifted it up a little bit so I wasn't creating the side trenches from moving dirt, then you get the teeth marks, tr the chisel marks back. So. But Christina, I don't know. I mean, the, the net overall result, you can see the chisel tracks back a little bit. It doesn't look quite as finish to me as it did when when you were letting it float. I think for moving dirt having it fixed is good and then maybe for just dragging just floating it because then it can just. With this it might be a two-step thing you come you get the chisel marks in but you flatten the area out and then you come with the chain harrow and just. Finish it off with a chain harrow. And make it look finished. That's the MK Martin TC5 I believe it's called. Yeah we've got a TC7 we're going to try outside in a little while. Let's Try the Unberfirth UM Perfecta 10. See what we can come up with on that. Okay, before we get into anything that's specific to the horse arena aspect, I just want to talk about a couple of observations of differences between these attachments that I see. The first thing is that the Unberfirth tool is a lot longer, okay? It has three rows of tines 
versus two rows of tines on the MK Martin. Now if we're working outdoors in uh, any sort of grass or weeds where you have some, uh, well, something that might choke it up, right? Something that might plug up. Having the extra row of tines is gonna really be helpful because they're all further apart. In here, I'm not sure that's gonna be an advantage because they don't have anything that's going to plug the unit, and, but the extra length may make it harder to turn and it may make it um, just dif more difficult to drive in general. Just some, some thoughts I have on that. The MK Martin unit, if you had any grass or weeds and you were trying to work through, you're just gonna plug it immediately. It's gonna work like a landscape rake, really. The next difference is that instead of a, a, a fixed solid blade back there, even fixed or variable, this one has a spike hero teeth. The Harris is uh, floating with a spring, but it seems to be somewhat uh, attached to the rolling basket harrow behind it. I can say he's stirring up a lot more dust on this side. We've got a 3R tractor on this one. We had a 2R on the other one. What do you think, Christina? What, what do you think about this? I like it also. Here. I uh, kind of like the smoother look of that one. Yeah. But this is, I mean, it's doing the same thing. It's maybe not as squishy. No, it doesn't feel as squishy, does yeah. it? Yeah. I'm wondering if it will get a little more squishy after another pass as or two. As he goes, but, yeah. Uh, I don't know if he was going deeper with the other one or... Do you want it to be a little more squishy or do you want it not? Um, I want it a little squishier. Squishy, that's a technical term we, there, Christy. Yeah. <laughs> not necessarily squishy, but like cushiony so that when they hit the ground with their front feet that it is soft, but it then has the push back a little bit. Where this is, I feel like if we just jump in it, we just kind of yeah, it, plant. It's, it's a, it, it, it feels more firm right on the surface, yeah. So it, it would seem, you know, I mean, not knowing what I'm talking about, it would seem like it'd be a little harder on their feet. Yeah. What would be a negative of being too cushiony? Too, too deep. Yeah, too deep. so then that affects their uh, tendons and the stretch of their tendon. Um, so if it doesn't support them when they land and like maybe they slip out from under, you can have a lot of tendon injuries and you can, yeah, so that's also not good. Okay, but we've not got close to that with either of these tools. No. You're thinking like four or five inches at that point? Yeah, and it more has to do with yeah how much soil you have, not necessarily how you're dragging it with that. Okay, if it's a real sandy soil and you've got a lot of it. And when we go outside, um, you'll notice a little bit, and I wish I knew more about what sand is in each arena, but since I didn't put it in, I don't really know. But this sand tends to clean a little bit better and have a little bit more support where that one, because it's a little drier outside, um, is a little bit looser. And so when it's a little bit looser, it's also not great to jump in all the time. Yeah, I mean, I can feel that here. It's, a, it's like a little bit of clay in it or something. Yeah. You can pack this. Yeah, you if can we, pack if this. If we stomp on this, you can pack it. Uh, unlike sand on the beach, for instance, that you really can't pack at all. And I think it has to do with the moisture as well. But. Probably. Well, you need to get a water truck so you can spread that outdoor one. Our next one is that I want to get a drag with a wa like those big water things on oh. the tanks that they have on them. Okay, so you can do it all in one. You can yeah. incorporate the water then instead of just putting it on top. Wow. I need one of those, Christy. I don't think I'm going to get it much more better than... So the middle was super easy. Okay. The, the middle, it, it smoothed it out and it, and it finished it better than that one. The problem was when I was turning, like you said, I had to lift it. And turning and banking these corners as tight as I was without dragging it, I created mud pits. So you would have to back in. I think that's probably because it's longer, don't you? It's, it's because it's longer and then navigating the fence line, it also V's outward. So instead of looking right behind me where I can see, I also had to contribute for another six, eight inches yep. at, and, the, at the end. And since it's longer, it's going to swing wider. So getting close to the fence line 
and then lifting it and then banking a turn, it was, it's a little more to manage. And our arena is also not the biggest, so banking turns tight, it was a lot more difficult. I think I'm going to go all the way around with this one and see okay. if I can take a wider corner and not try to bank ah. it so tight yeah. and just take it wide and see if I can turn with it down and not crank on okay. it. At the same time, Christine and I can see if that firms that up on that side. I mean, it'll be interesting if it stays cushy after this one runs over it. I think there's there are two different things. If that this one, this is like a one step thing because that looks tons better without the chisels and than that one did. I had to do that one in two steps. I had to flatten it and then come back and take, you know, the, with the, move, the dirt that I moved and fix it to make it look finished. I need to let you know that, uh, you know, when we were talking behind your back. Yeah, you know, judging. Talking with the wife, you the know, wife. And, yeah, yeah, you know, you know how that goes. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, actually what she was saying was that she didn't think this was quite cushy enough. It, it, it really feels different. It, it, it didn't drop it near enough, like, but it's also longer and it, the, the teeth are springier. So like so when, you didn't, I, when I dropped it, they kind of they kind of bent and so you didn't on think top. it was going in deep enough. I can adjust that. I I can also drop it, drop okay. it more. Okay. You can either put it down or I can shorten the top link of, on the three point hitch if if you. I didn't drop it like I. Oh, you didn't put it in as far as you could. I, I did could. when I was running it. Oh, did you? Did yeah, it? Yeah, I just put it down. It didn't, yeah, drop it, it. didn't go very far because <laughs> that that basket harrow is going to hold it up. Yeah, but I'll drop it more and see if I dig in anymore. Really, what I'm hearing is the number one disadvantage to this one is the overall length in this, at least in this environment. And I think, as I was saying before, I think outdoors where we were trying to navigate grass, I don't mean in, a, in an arena situation, but if we were trying to keep it from plugging up, look how much more right. space there is between the, if you between were the tines. Yeah. You know what I like about this? 21st Century, your dealer, yeah. recommended the other one to you. Yes, they did. And they sell both of these. Yes, they do. So when we're on site, on your property, we've proven that, at least in your opinion, in the smaller confined area, that the one they sold you yes, sir. is the best one for the job. Yes, sir. That's a good feeling. Yeah. <laughs> it's good that I bought the right one. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Jason, this is risky. I'll tell you from personal experience, what's going on here right now is risky. Yeah. You've got Christina driving the tractor. You probably need a tractor. Uh, yeah. Because you just lost yours. Yep. It's gone and um, maybe not as ran as well as I, I'd like it to be. Oh, don't, don't, <laughs> don't, don't, don't say that. She's doing a fine job. There's, yeah. She just needs practice, right? Lots of practice. I was glad to see her hop up in there and uh, be just be excited about going she's with done it. it before <laughs> yeah you can tell that she's operated the tractor now we're in the outdoor arena here and or at least i guess it's kind of two arenas isn't it kind of split in half yeah we use it for two different trainers not only two different trainers christina runs this side the other trainer can know over there and while christina has a big group of lessons going on she can run a couple kids over there and they can warm up on the far side okay mm -hmm. Now, while this is your tractor, this is not your drag. This is an MK Martin TC7. It's a seven foot version of what you have a five foot in there. Yep. Uh, it'll be interesting to see how your tractor handles it and you know what, what Christina thinks of it. You'll get a try with it here in a little bit. I think for the bigger, the bigger and not so tight bank turns, the seven foot wouldn't save me time or would only save me time. It would do, it would do a better job. Yeah. yeah. I think I think doing a little bit better job because being a little bit wider would would. Right. I think when you get to when you get a little deeper, it's going to pull uh, all that tractor wants to pull in the sand. I think the tractor may spin its wheels too. So it, it, it it'll might be interesting to see how that goes. It might not be. She might not have to go as deep. The the indoors are built layered, so right. you don't want to go as deep. The outdoor is sand, so we can. She as long as she gets the top layer off, it will be. Okay. We'll be all right. Okay. So we're expecting that as she do, does multiple passes here that we will get down to where that blade right. is, is leveling so we won't see the uh, tine marks as much. As she softens it up, even at the level, even if she, wherever level she's on, it'll sink and catch more of it anyways.
Yeah, we're seeing the blade beginning yeah. to catch back here. Now, you've had this tractor, what, about a year? Uh, yeah, a more than a year, but yeah. Okay, well, our viewers are always interested in, well, in just hearing about, you know, your, your, your experience, why you chose your particular tractor, why you chose your right. dealer. So here in Longmont, I went to 21st Century. I needed a compact trailer, oh, like over there in those stalls, I needed a tractor that can get in and out of small gates. Okay. And, and still be able to work in a pin. You needed a narrow track. I needed a narrow. And then um, I also didn't want to, like when days like when we're working in the snow or it's 100 degrees out, I wanted the cab. And uh, I talked to a, a guy named Ed down at 21st, and he was more than excited to help me. He just explained everything. He literally laid three tractors out and said, do you want this one? Do you want air ride? Do you want, you know, a stereo or, you know, kind of the smaller parts? He said all of them will work and get in and out of pins, but here's you know your selection of what will work best for your situation. Did you look at any of the competition? Um, you know I I was gonna go John Deere, so when I when I met my smart marketing person and, and you know I could go in there and shake hands and then afterwards maybe crack a cold one, you know that was my guy. You know okay. that's that's kind of how I work. I so, work. So for you, it was the sales guy. It was Ed. It was Ed, yeah. And and he he really he really helped you a lot on that situation. Yeah. Uh, did you you didn't consider anything besides John Deere? I also then we we went and got a, a small gator because we get around we the same kind of deal. We need to get in and out. And I went the the com competition, and um, I've literally taken just to change the oil. I've taken the oil filter out, gone to O'Reilly's, and said. I need something to match this. And yeah. then of course it's in a different language, it's a different brand. And while I have the oil filter in hand, I've got the wrong filter as a replacement for that. So just just going with John Deere, you, I can go down to the store and I can say, I don't even need to bring the part with me. I just say, hey, I got this tractor, here we go. And they can hand me the exact part that yeah. will fit. And they have it. And they have it right there in the store, so it's easy to get to. Well, that, that comfort goes a long way, especially you, you don't have a lot of tractor experience, right? Uh, no, I've worked in a lot of tractors, but fixing them myself is something different to me. Over the course of the time we've spent here, you've got to drive several different uh, tractors, uh, yep. all John Deere's, of course, yep. because 21st century zoo's got us here. Yep. But did you, did you get the right tractor? I've got the right tractor for mine. I, like even driving the, the the different types, in my situation, this bank's turned so so better or so more more efficiently that I can turn sharper and I can get into the corners and you know doing fencing and. So you were able to notice the 2038R's uh, turning radius not being as tight as your right away, right away. This thing can almost turn a circle. So it, it really is. <laughs> It really is a step better. People people don't grasp that. They would think that the 2R would turn sharper than the 3R, but it does not. This this 3R is uh, is stunning. I, what else do you use the machine for? Everything. Uh, we've used it for fencing. I've done. I've built augers with it. Um, I've built roads with it. Um, coming out here on during the winters, it's starting to get cold now. Is once it snows, I'll plow with it. Some of the horses will run up on the fence. So I've reset the leveling of the fences. I've done everything with this. Anything you can think of. We actually, where the weeds are now, we haven't got to them. We've taken a lot of sand off of this. So we've dropped this, this outdoor arena about four inches and I've just built up all the sand on the side. Okay, so you, so all this sand that's humped on the sides you took out with I your took, tractor and box blade? And then I've used it in different areas. If, if the horse is in the stalls, they're, they get too mucky, I go refill them with this sand. Uh, for winter, winterizing the auto waters, I've put sand on them so they're not exposed at all. Have you d tried anything that the tractor has not been able to do for you? Not been able to do. Um, no, not yet. Um, haven't found a situation. So yet. it's been nimble enough for everything you need in tight spaces. It's been powerful enough for everything you've needed in, yep. in big spaces. This is why I like the 3R guys. The 3046R is probably my favorite all around of all different sizes. Of course, the 1025R is so nimble, I can never uh, complain about that <laughs> yeah. one. But, uh, but in, in it, I find it very fascinating that you you wanted the narrow stance. And I, I, I right. preach that all the time, that there is a lot of value in that. If there's one complaint about this tractor, it's that it has 
a little bit of a tipsiness. And it, it, it doesn't take much to get tipsy. Um, at, at, at the other property, and even here, if you hit a divot just right, and you're so top tall that you're, it, once you lean a little bit, and then you're another three foot up, you're leaning a lot. So you just gotta be careful and know that you, you, you can go over and it doesn't yeah. take a lot. You, yeah. need to, you need to talk to Ed or perhaps a local tire company and get Rimguard, uh, beet juice in your tires. Yep. Uh, and that will help. It, that tractor's gonna be a little tipsy. That's, yeah. That is the, the weak spot of that tractor. But I would say that in a lot of my situations, having the narrow stance yeah. is, is better off. Thank you. This was very helpful. Thank I think you. for our viewers, this looks to me like the MK Martin TC series was the ones you guys like. Yeah. Which is good, because we own that one. <laughs> yeah, and, uh, just like we were saying, I mean, that, that kind of reinforcement that uh, 21st century got you the right. You did good, Anna. All right, good. <laughs> you guys got them the right product, and I think you got them the right size. I think the seven foot, it may be more than this machine wants to handle in this loose sand like this. So I, I think you got the right size. You think so, Jason? I think the larger size is hard to look back and look forward, look back to make sure you're not wiping out a fence. My, my tractor's five foot long, so it, as long as I know I'm not hitting it with my tractor, I'm not hitting it with my implement. Yeah. Yeah, well, you know, this has been incredibly educational for me. I, I had no idea what kind of surface the, the horses would want. And now that I'm out here and it's all squishy and nice, I'm thinking maybe my living room needs to be. <laughs> no! Oh, well, okay, so maybe, no, maybe not so much on that. Could we come back sometime? Yeah, whenever you want. Right. We got more we got projects. We got lots of projects. More projects to do. This has been an enormous amount of fun, Hannah. This is uh, this is this is great. I'm glad you guys got hooked up over the I years. I am too. I, I'm, I'm glad she took pity on me. <laughs> <laughs> Hope you guys have enjoyed it. Thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see you next time on Tractor, Tractor time, time with Tim. Tim. And I saw heaven open, and behold, a white horse, and he who sat on it is called Faithful and True, and in righteousness he judges and wages war. Good boy. Good boy. <laughs>